win against a big SEC name uh, and go into a weekend, go three and one against a good Southern Miss team and a Valpo team that's probably better than their record shows. Uh, just kind of run down the week what you saw from a team that was good and bad and what can get better. Yeah, I think the, probably the best thing I liked uh, was how we responded after a couple of tough one-run losses at McNeese, or excuse me, at uh, at Nichols uh, on the road. Um, bounced back after the Louisiana Tech loss uh, on Tuesday. Played well against Little Rock. Had two one-run losses against Nichols. Um, played Mizzou at home. Uh, obviously played well doing that. Um, had a had a really tough Friday night game. Um, probably a game we didn't. Um, a lot of times you don't win that game. They had some really good arms run out. Um, uh, Southern Miss got us on, on Saturday. Um, they, uh, they had a really good approach against Will Dion. Um, had some things, uh, you know, work out in their favor. Um, and everything they did, it worked out right. And um, credit to them. Uh, but I thought our response really well, even after getting down four to one on Sunday, was, was just incredible. It's tough to, to know you got a double header that day and kind of get down early. And, uh, not be able to get the starter, you know, through the third inning, and uh, the boys just responded really, really well. Um, so the, I mean, a couple of things you, you want to learn about your team as you as you're in the uh, the pre the pre conference time um, is the, the ability to come back. How do you respond from adversity? Um, how do you respond to a, a loss, a tough loss, a big loss, all the different things? Um, and so you're starting to see some things, and you know, some char some some characteristics of this team and how we're going to be able to uh, win baseball games. Um, the, uh, you know, we want to come out of this thing healthy. Uh, I think we've got four non-conference games left before we uh, open up at Lamar. And uh, we're still trying to figure out a few things. I mean, we, we finally got Wells Cooley back, Reed Borg back, um, some guys coming off uh, injuries, still got some guys banged up. And uh, we're just still trying to, you know, figure out the way to kind of put the puzzle together. But uh, I was really proud of the boys. Um, how they played a long day. I mean, we had some guys, uh, you know, at the in the in the facility at 9:30 yesterday, and you know, we didn't get out of there till you know um, about eight o'clock last night. So it was a long day for them. So really proud of them and kind of how they handled their business. And uh, you know, we don't have a midweek this week, but I think it's going to be a good thing for us. And uh, you know, we've got a good ULM team coming in uh, this weekend. With ULM, obviously, you know, they can put some put runs on the board. But the thing I want to ask you for this weekend is your pitching rotation. Is it going to be, is it still kind of a, you're going to try out, see which guys can start, or is it going to be something that mirrors more of what we'll see during conference play since it is going to be a three-game series? Well, we're trying to find, uh, we're trying to find who's good, who else is going to start um, besides Will right now. Uh, the goal is to try to get Will back on Friday for this week. We'll see how he is, uh, you know, coming back, you know, from Saturday to, to, to Friday. Um, just kind of how things work out. That would be the plan. Uh, if it doesn't work out for that, just kind of from him, his health standpoint, uh, we'll be, he'll throw on Saturday. Uh, but right now the goal is to get him on Friday. And, uh after that, I really don't know. I mean, we, we didn't. Uh, that, that's uh, that was a couple of, of you know some some trends we've seen that need to change from the, the starting pitchers just not being able to get out of that. Um, I don't think that's I don't think that's who they they can be. That's who we are right now. Um, so uh, right now it's kind of TBA right now. Um, but uh, and, and you know trying to find the, the, the right guys against a good offense. Um, you know, kind of how they line up, see how, you know, if, if we're already able to throw Will on Friday night, uh, kind of see how they respond to different things. But, I mean, there's some guys that have, that have got some opportunities uh, this week in the five games uh, that, that made some really good pitches and did some good things. Um, I don't think you could have a cooler day in college baseball than Cale Bro did yesterday. Uh, made his first Division One start as position player and then come in and start the nightcap and uh, get the win and um, do some things. and. Um, that was who we thought it, that, that he would be, you know. I mean, I, I, I was I was proud of him uh, from a pitching standpoint. I mean, the whole whole thing, but especially on the mound, because uh, I I know that's where he can make a big impact for us. Um, so you can see him uh, potentially come coming back in the in the rotation as well. So uh, we'll we'll kind of see how, how everybody kind of responds, and and so we've we'll, we'll got some work to do this week. Um, but um, they'll, they'll they'll be back at it. Um, so I. I wish I had the answer to you on that one, um, but the, the, the positive is we've started to see some guys evolve uh, bullpen-wise. Um, Kevin, what Kevin Royard's done, uh, what Hunter Reeves has done, uh, Isaac Duplashan and some things, um, how
how he's been, you know, commanding the baseball. Um, and then, uh, you know, Danny Hecker is, is, you know, still a little bit of a work in progress right now, but, um, you know, he gives you a chance every time he goes out there. So, um, so I, I think we're still looking, you know, trying to find some more guys or, or you know, the guys we have trying to make some improvements. So uh, we'll see. It, it, the, the, the jury's still out a little bit. And uh, I would like to have it figured out by, comp, by open up conference. But if we don't have it figured out by then, we just got to find a way to win baseball games and, and continue to work. So it, it, it doesn't always work out. I mean, I would have liked, um, you know, Reed Bork to have started every game at shortstop, but, you know, the game doesn't work out that way um, sometimes. Um, so. Uh, we'll, we'll take that same approach from a pitching staff, and uh, we'll have we'll have as much patience as we can. Um, but the, the guys are working at it, and uh, you know, usually when when guys work at it, they, they eventually figure it out. Speaking of the pitching staff, you have a guy like Adam Glory make his season debut this year, and I think hasn't pitched in almost two years. He comes out and pitches two full innings and picks up two strikeouts, is that someone who could maybe contribute in the middle or the back end of the bullpen come later in the season? Well, I think anytime a guy's left-handed, he gives them an advantage. Um, and, and so that, that's something we've, we've kind of looked at. And, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, three weeks in for him to get his first opportunity. And, and you know, he's been working. Uh, he's been working while he's been over there. And um, he took advantage of his opportunity. And, uh, you know, with, with success brings more opportunities. And, uh, you know, could be the next time he gets in there, it could be a little more of a high, more, little bit, you know, higher leverage situation. So, uh, same thing, John Bouchelle did the same thing. Uh, so, um, guys know you, you, you do well, you get more opportunities, you don't, you may have to wait your turn the next next go around. So, um, again, it's, 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 and that we, we kind of knew that that could happen with the pitching staff, um, not, not from a lack of talent, but from lack of knowing who's back. Um, just you know, or, or established roles from the previous year or whatever, and um, you know, some guys have kind of um, started to solidify some things at the back end of the game. But but the the other the other the other roles are starting to. I mean, they're they're still up for grabs and some things. So um, we'll keep working at it, and um, you know, but that was that was really good to see by Adam. So I was really proud of him. What was the mood like Saturday night? I know that that couldn't have been easy, but for your team to come back Sunday and respond the way that they did, that was pretty impressive. So what was what was the mood like? Was it, hey, we're not going to lose this team twice? Well, I, I don't, I, I couldn't really tell you what the what it was from the player standpoint. Um, I mean, you, you you try to articulate kind of what happened. I thought they had a great approach. Um, Will did not beat himself. Um, you, you could tell by. Um, the way the hitters were responding to pitches and what they were doing, it was a it was a unified approach and what they were doing and everything they did was was working. Every 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 ball they hit found grass and they got a lot of hits. I mean, only walked one guy, um, and I, I thought he I thought he actually he wasn't super crisp, but he was good enough to win. It just wasn't good enough to win that that night. And uh, a couple of plays away from that being a, a you know a, a two run game or a four run game or whatever it was, and it kind of got out of hand a little bit late, but. Um, I didn't know how they were going to respond. Um, I think that was Will Dion's 33rd college appearance and his first loss. And so when a guy uh, has been on the bottom of the dog pile, when the guy's dominated, you know, every appearance he's been in, um, you know, you, you wonder how people are going to respond because you, you, you don't know what they're ready for and stuff. But um, I think they, you know, Will said the right things, you know, the next day with a clear head. He goes, I just didn't want to beat myself. And, that's going to happen. You, you have to throw the ball over the plate, and uh, sometimes they're going to get hits. Uh, the percentages favor you uh, when you when you play that game. Um, you know they uh, that that's just the way the game works, and so they got him this time. And uh, but how they responded, um, you know, especially after being back down, I was, I, that, that kind of shows some resiliency of the team. And um, you know, it's a matter of taking you know taking that and working uh, working this week to improve. And that is. As, as long as we keep working to improve, as long as we understand we're not a finished product, um, this team's got a chance to be uh, to do some good things. You mentioned you mentioned Kale, and obviously the the cool day he had yesterday. But he has seen college baseball at its highest level as far as being at a Power Five school, a very really good school. What how how is his experience being at Mississippi State for so long? How has it paid off as far as here showing the experience with the kids, especially you know any all of them, but especially the younger ones. I don't think there's any substitute for experience, and 
uh, innings and uh, people have been through adversity. Um, he's been through adversity. I mean, just, you know, going, going away from home, uh, you know, as a, as a freshman, I think that there's something with that, you know, um, uh, having uh, multiple injuries uh, and being able to come out on the good end of that. Um, and then, you know, not, early in this, early, I mean, what wasn't necessarily healthy the entire time during the fall, kind of had a little bit of setback during the fall and he just keeps coming back. And, you know, when you do that without him saying, look at me, I mean, he, he provides a great example to, to players because there, there's, you know, everybody's going to go through adversity, um, you know, at, at this level at some point, um, just because of the level of competition, um, because there's, there's really no upsets. Um, and I think Ryan alluded to it. Valpo's, I mean, their their record, they that this a lot. Their record doesn't doesn't indicate you know what what type of team that they're that they're gonna that they have. I mean, because they've been in a lot of really close ball games, and um, you know it, it, it just how you respond to adversity tells everything about you. I mean, it's not whether or not you're gonna get punched. It's not it's not whether you're gonna lose. It's just how you respond after you fail and, and after after things don't work out for you. So uh, he's just been a great example um, to, to our players, um, a bit of an inspiration to a coach um, as well, just watching him go through that. And I, I think you saw him really freed up yesterday, um, just going to play. I mean, this is, a, this is a kid's game played by young men right now. And just watching him go through what he did um, and just going to play, it really didn't surprise me that was the best game he pitched because he had he went and go, went and played and had to go catch some balls in the outfield and throw the ball in and do all the stuff and there really wasn't time to think um, and then you know because when you start thinking in this game um, that's when the, that's when things get in the way um, and so maybe that's one of the disadvantages of having a bunch of guys with 3.0 so too much thinking so uh, but uh, they 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 were I, I was I was I was proud of him and I think his I think his impact. Um, on, on the guys here is going to outlast his his uh, you know his one year with us. Coach, what's uh, what, what role do you have in mind for Roby? Um, <clears throat> right now, he's kind of been the guy coming in right before Reeves. Um, you know, it was it wasn't ideal for him to come in in the fifth inning yesterday, but you know, knowing we had a double header, um, it was that was kind of what we thought we had to do. Um, and, and I think he did the same thing uh, on Friday night. Um, you know, he could have finished that game on Friday night, but you know, sitting there staring down the barrel of um, you know opening night with four games coming in, and um, you know we, we we wanted to save those bullets for Southern Miss on Friday. We didn't want him to go two innings and not be available the next night. Um, but he, he can stretch it out past a couple, past one inning, even two innings. He showed that against Nichols on uh, I think it was um, I think it was on Sunday when he did that. So. Uh, almost kind of a fireman role. Um, he, he's, he comes in, can pitch in traffic. He's shown the ability to do that. Um, and then, you know, he's, he's done a lot of things since he's been here. Um, so, but he could close the back, he could close the game out if we need to. And, um, but that, that's just kind of the way the game works because once you get into conference, um, you know, the games, the games change. They're different sometimes. You, you, you manage Friday different than you do Saturday. And if both neither guy is throwing on Sunday, um, you may have a quick hook. You may have the you may have the closer in in the third inning on Sunday. So that that's just kind of the way you got to deal with it. But he's shown the ability to do that, stretch it out, and um, it's nice to have two guys you trust at the, at the in the back end of the bullpen. So um, I'll ask you the same thing I asked Coach Landry. No week, no midweek game. I know when I asked the players last night, they were happy to kind of have this time to be able mm -hmm. to rest. But I guess. What are you plan? What are your plans for the week as far as being able to get the kids, you know, mixture of rest and preparation? Well, I think you got to look at it uh, almost kind of player to player. Um, guy like Nate Fisbeck, I mean, that was a guy that we wanted to early in the year to maybe DH him at the back end of the doubleheader, um, but uh, injuries didn't allow us to do that. Um, he, he needs a day off, and when I say a day off, he needs to basically just get back ready for the week. Um, get back ready for, for Friday. Um, so I think you look at uh, where Nate Fisbeck uh, may be different than Wells Cooley. Cooley's trying to get back in shape, um, doing some things. And uh, same thing with a guy like Raspberry played every defensive inning. Um, uh, Dickerson's come off a little hamstring thing. And, um, you know, so I think you treat those guys a little bit differently um, than, than maybe some guys that have kind of, you know, played uh, every other game or a little bit more sparingly. Um, so we'll. 
probably on Tuesday we'll ha we'll have some guys uh, you know that maybe throw on Friday or uh, short on Saturday, uh, maybe throw in a simulated game, uh, try to get some guys some at bats that, that maybe haven't seen some live at bats. Um, you know, there, there's some things you can see with that. Um, maybe some guys just need to get in the bullpen and get get to work. And uh, so, um, to be honest with you, this time of year, two days off wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we get rain or something like that. But um, probably, uh, you know, just a, a, a normal practice. I say normal. Make sure we cover our first and thirds, getting our throws down to second. Uh, make sure communication sharp on on Wednesday. Uh, light BP, ground balls, defensive, getting ready for the weekend on Thursday. So, um, so it, it's really kind of player to player kind of thing. Um, but um, and just just starting to get get healthy, ready for the ready for the weekend. Good. Awesome. Thanks, cool. Coach. Thanks. Thanks.